Potato. Hello, I'm Samantha Jolly. You're watching Seven's Afternoon News, live from Perth. Coming up, the manhunt for a robber who terrorised a fast food worker for less than $100. Incredible scenes. The moment an autistic boy lost for days is found safe and well. George Floyd laid to rest at a private funeral in Texas as President Trump sparks fresh anger. Residents in a bitter fight over a billion-dollar highway extension in Perth's north. And the footy is back and so are the crowds, but they'll be strictly controlled. A brazen thug could be facing a life sentence for a robbery that earned him less than $100. He was captured on security camera robbing a young worker in Perth South. The Apple Cross McDonald's employee was threatened with a screwdriver and left traumatised. As Cassidy Moscone reports, it's not the only violent incident along the stretch of Canning Highway. Good afternoon. Workers inside this McDonald's didn't have any warning of the attack they were forced to endure on the night of May the 3rd. The armed assailant storms in, concealing his identity with his face covered and hands in gloves. He runs, jumps the counter and tries the till, but it's locked. An unsuspecting young male worker is confronted with a screwdriver. Pushing past him, the man moves on to his next target, another young employee, before the manager comes out of a concealed room and opens the till. The man empties it, getting away with not even $100 cash. It's extraordinarily stupid. Um, he's committed an offence that carries a maximum penalty of life imprisonment for less than $100. And that really ought to deter other people that might think of committing these sort of offences. The risk reward is all skew if. It's not the only violent incident that's taken place recently in Applecross. Just yesterday, down the road at the IGA, workers were threatened and held up at gunpoint. Forensics and detectives swarmed the shop. Tonight in 7 News at 6, we'll bring you the latest on the manhunt for the robber. An eight-year-old girl is in hospital facing months of rehabilitation after she collided with a truck south of Perth. Witnesses say the little girl and her brother were riding their bicycles home from Dudley Park Primary School yesterday afternoon, just before the accident happened. She was riding across this intersection when she was knocked off her bike by a truck. Locals rushed outside after they heard a bang and a scream. Well, we saw um, the little girl's brother <coughs> holding her up. It seemed like she had been injured. She was lying in the, in the middle of the road. Um, as we got closer, we realised that she was conscious, which was a good sign. Um, but her back was being kept straight and she was battling to move around a bit. She couldn't actually um, stand up because that was a little bit too painful. At one point, we had laid her down in the recovery position and she was saying, can I please roll over onto my back because I'm very uncomfortable. Um, but um, the fact that she could still like move her limbs and you know her back was probably a good sign. The truck driver was distraught. In a message to parents and students, Dudley Park Primary School today said the eight-year-old was wearing her bike helmet, which prevented further injuries. The girl remains in Perth Children's Hospital in a stable condition. A bitter fight has broken out over a billion dollar road that's keeping nearby residents awake at night. Jeff Parry joins us. Jeff, that's a lot of money to spend on a road. What's wrong with it? Well, too noisy according to the residents, Sam. We went out there and had a look today and they certainly do have something to complain about. The road in question is the Tonkin Highway extension known as Northlink. The section that's troubling residents is the part that runs north of Ellenbrook to Muche. Uh, it has a much rougher surface than uh, known as a chip seal and you can certainly hear the difference driving on the different surfaces. Bullsbrook and Muche residents say they're putting up with it uh, 24 hours a day and they've had enough. I can go inside, shut every door and window, put the TV on and I can still hear it. It just goes on and on. The residents say the government finished the road on the cheap and they're the ones to suffer. The opposition's transport spokesperson Libby Meadam agrees. The McGowan government have certainly sold these people short. This is um, a fantastic federally funded project, but unfortunately it hasn't been uh, completed to a suitable standard. Main Roads admits that there is a problem. Hear what they have to say in the news at six, Sam. 
Thanks, Jeff. Scott Ostick has spent his first full day as a free man in almost 13 years. The father of two walked out of prison on bail yesterday ahead of his retrial for the alleged murder of his pregnant secret lover, Stacey Thorne, in 2007. For her family, the grief is as raw as ever and another trial means more heartache. That will take place in October and run for at least six weeks. More than two weeks after his death sparked a global uprising, George Floyd has been laid to rest next to his mother in Houston. As Paul Kadak reports, it was a day of unity, but not without controversy fuelled by the president. Good afternoon. It was emotional and it was powerful. George Floyd's family wanted it to be a celebration of the life of the man they loved. But today's funeral was also a call for justice and a call for change. More than two weeks after George Floyd's death, today in Houston, those closest to him came to mourn and farewell. George Floyd and his big smile and sense of humor can never be replaced. Celebrating a life. I just want to say I, to him, I love you, and um, I thank God for giving me, giving me my own personal Superman. Taken too soon. When George Floyd went down, the whole nation and the world rose up. He went down in hate, we're rising in love. Presidential hopeful Joe Biden sending his regards in a video message. To George's children and grandchild. I know you miss your dad and your granddad. Daddy's looking down, he's so proud of you. In the crowd, a familiar face, someone who's walked the Floyd family's path. Don Damon, fiance of Australian woman Justine, murdered by a Minneapolis police officer. I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm so disappointed. Um, and I just really want to put my arms around Roxy and her daughter. As George was being laid to rest, protesters continued to march, saying they won't rest until there's change in America's police departments. No no President Donald Trump overnight adding fuel to the fire, tweeting a conspiracy theory about an elderly protester knocked to the ground by police last week, saying he was pushed away after appearing to scan police communications in order to black out the equipment. The 75-year-old remains in hospital in a serious condition. In Houston, hundreds of people lined the streets on a scorching day as George Floyd's golden casket was taken to its final resting place. Two weeks ago, in Minneapolis, in his final moments, he called out for his mother and has been laid to rest beside her today. There's been an incredible end to a three-day search for a missing autistic boy. 14-year-old William Callahan spent two nights lost in Victorian bushland in freezing temperatures. A local man found the teen safe and looking angelic. It's been an incredibly emotional afternoon here at Mount Disappointment. William Callahan was found in the dense bushland here by a local volunteer on foot. It has been revealed that volunteer had chocolate on him and he offered it to the 14-year-old and then alerted authorities. That's when the delicate operation uh, began to bring William back down to his family. He has now been taken away in an ambulance to the Royal Children's Hospital where he's getting a uh, quick look over but all in all he has escaped relatively unharmed thank you everyone I, I'm no I'm so grateful you're all amazing you I didn't well. believe it I just thought uh, you know you know I can't imagine what he's been feeling and going through what's the first told? thing you guys gonna do when life gets a little bit back to normal I'd like to take him on a holiday I think about 15 metres from me just standing there. It was really angelic, just, just standing and looking, so, you know. Was uh, he looking at you? Yeah, and, but he was, uh, yeah. And so I just, I heard that he liked Thomas the Tank. And so I just sort of talked to him about diesel. More than 450 people, both volunteers and search crews, spent the last few days looking for him. They used specialised technology, such as a uh, helicopter that came in from Canberra with scan thermal scanning technology to search this dense bushland. Today, there were PA systems put out around this dense area and played uh, Thomas the Tank Engine Williams' favourite song in the hope that uh, he would come out. But today the result has been what everyone has been hoping for and he will be back in a warm bed very soon. 
a lucky boy. A man charged with murdering his sister at their Western Sydney home will remain behind bars until at least August after he was denied bail. Friends and family are now paying tribute to West Australian Gabriella Delaney, who was found dead at the townhouse yesterday. Well, two days after the body of Gabriella Delaney was discovered inside her Western Sydney home, police still have it cordoned off as a crime scene as they work to get to the bottom of exactly what went on here. This morning, her 30-year-old brother, Lucas Delaney, faced court on one count of murder. He chose not to appear as the case against him was adjourned for eight weeks and he was formally refused bail. Tributes for the young artist and university student are being shared by friends and family online, describing the 20-year-old as gorgeous, sweet, quiet and talented. Police suspect she suffered traumatic blunt force trauma to her head and died sometime last Wednesday. It would be six days before her body was found when her parents in Western Australia couldn't reach her and contacted police. Her brother had stayed at a series of motels in Western Sydney before checking himself into a mental health hospital, allegedly with a history of bipolar and drug use. Anti-domestic violence campaigners say sadly many women are experiencing violence within their own homes and help is available. It's really, really important um, that if you're at home uh, right now and you're um, feeling unsafe, that you know that services are there to support you. Um, you can contact 1800 RESPECT. The murder case returns to court in August. China has warned students against returning to Australia for study, claiming there have been several cases of discrimination against Asians during the coronavirus pandemic. The timing couldn't be worse for universities already facing major financial pressure. The warning from China's Ministry of Education came out late yesterday, aimed at its residents who study here, claiming that during the pandemic there have been discriminatory incidents against Asians in Australia and that Chinese nationals should be cautious in choosing to study in Australia. That message sending shockwaves through an industry already under considerable financial pressure due to COVID-19. Well, we disagree with it. Uh, Australia is an uh, open and welcoming uh, country. We are very popular uh, with um, international students. More than one million people of Chinese descent happily, safely and proudly live in Australia. And I think they all put the lie to the claim of the Chinese Communist Party that this is an unsafe country uh, for Chinese people. This is just the latest in a series of diplomatic moves by China over the past few months, including barley tariffs, beef bans and more recently a travel warning. China, though, insists it has no connection with Australia's role in pushing for an international investigation into the origins of COVID-19. Footy's back this week and so are the crowds. In Sydney and Adelaide, AFL games will allow a small number of fans into the venues, but the games in Melbourne will be played inside empty stadiums. Blake Johnson reports from Melbourne. In Adelaide, 2,200 people are allowed in to see this week's showdown. In Sydney, 350 at both AFL matches there. Here, empty stadiums. Watching your team live in Victoria is at least two weeks away. Would you feel comfortable going to a footy match at the moment? Oh, no doubt. Collingwood legend Tony Shaw supports state government restrictions but says common sense tells us small crowds here are possible. Richmond, if they've got 100,000 fans and they'll have 10 games of the 17 at home, um, somehow 10,000 can get in and we can isolate them in certain ways in bays and whatever. We won't be rushed into making a decision here. We will be taking the advice of the Chief Health Officer. Queensland is considering a return to crowds next weekend. It's interesting to think there'll be more people in the Big Brother house tonight than there will be at the MCG to see Collingwood v Richmond. A survey of more than 500 epidemiologists shows sport events, concerts and theatre shows are the last activities they'd return to. 64% would wait at least one year. The MCG is way bigger, so why is it a risk at the MCG and not in Sydney and Adelaide? Look, every jurisdiction's making um, their own uh, decisions based on uh, their assessment of risk. Blake Johnson, 7 News. Coronavirus has taken a heavy economic toll on the city of Mandra, like many areas that rely on tourists. As the visitors have stayed away, businesses have suffered. Rory Campbell is in Mandra and explains how the city is hoping to tempt people back. Mandra has been hit hard by COVID-19 as visitors and tourists have stayed away 
thousands have been impacted with no one going crabbing, no one hauling crayfish. Up to 85% of the people who visit Mandra come from intrastate. And with those intrastate borders being lifted, a new campaign is being launched to bring those people back to Mandra. It's being launched on June 22 by one of Australia's most famous faces. He's a local West Australian. He's not just famous in this country, he's famous right around the world. In 7 News at 6, tune in to find out who it is. Up next, why the Labor Party has sent four of its MPs to be tested for COVID-19. Plus, a movement sweeping the UK and Europe, removing historical statues. And hiding beneath the earth how this ancient city was rediscovered. You can't hear the panic, but a mother fears her baby is dying. There's only one reason he survived. 7 News, tonight. They're coming. Oh my God! Descending from the heavens, another four housemates. What is going on here? With a new challenge oh. and a new eviction. You flirting with me again? No. <laughs> okay, sorry. New Big Brother, tonight, 7.30 on 7. Join AHM Hospital and Extras Direct and you'll get six weeks free. Plus, we'll waive any two and six month waits on extras. Whether you're a single, a couple, or a family. It's that simple. Uh, that doesn't look very simple. Offer ends June 30. Find out more and join AHM Direct today. AHM, the simple bit. But to do, you know, all this is going to be painted oh, again. Geez. I lowered all my door frames by two feet, just as a neighbor reminder that the Aldi are having their special buys. Well, you can't miss that. Hey, precisely. <laughs> Turn your doorway into an epic reminder for this Saturday and get a clothes dryer for $249, a stainless steel dishwasher for $299 and a bar fridge for $99.99. Only at Aldi. Good. Different. Are you unable to work due to illness or injury? You could claim insurance as part of your super. Talk to Australia's number one law firm today. Morris Blackburn Lawyers will maximise your claim. Call for your free super check now. It costs nothing to know where you stand. With Belong, you get 10 gigs of mobile data for $25 a month. That's 10 gigs of family time. 10 gigs of scrolling through memory lane. 10 gigs of staycations or 10 gigs of catching up with the family. Plus, unlimited international calls and texts to selected countries for $5 extra. We all spend family time differently. Together, we're different. Belong. Rarely seen, but always there for us. Our Australian donors have continually provided vital support. Now, more than ever, we thank you for your mercy and compassion toward the forgotten poor in Africa. Mercy Ships. We'll take the old grout out and put the new grout in. We'll fix your leaking shell, make it brand new and sparkling. Grout on. We want to tow into a wave with a helicopter. I don't even know if it's possible. The speed was just outrageous. One of the toughest things I've ever done. Start something wonderful with Curtain World's Winter Sale. With 50% off blockout curtains, 50% off roller blinds, sheer curtains $299, plus very shades and shutters on sale. Open up your world. Our top-notch team of stain experts are testing the toughest stains day and night to develop our best stain removal. New Dynamo Professional Oxy Plus. It removes tough stains for a superior clean. New Dynamo Professional Oxy Plus. You're watching 7's 4pm news live from Perth. Right now in the city it's 22 degrees, but we do have some severe weather coming. I'll have all the details for you soon. 
Three men, one with links to the Gypsy Jokers outlaw motorcycle gang, have been charged with stealing more than a quarter of a million dollars worth of gold. It's alleged they stole it along with a two-ton safe, front-end loader and four-wheel drive from a mine site in the gold fields in April this year. They'll appear before the Kalgoorlie Magistrates Court tomorrow. Federal Parliament has resumed with Labor marching four of its MPs off for COVID-19 tests and ordering them to isolate because they attended weekend Black Lives Matter rallies. But Green Senator Janet Rice is refusing to be tested. Tim Lester reports from Canberra. Four Labor MPs head for COVID-19 tests. Not that any of them are acknowledging symptoms of the virus. In fact, two of the four attended rallies in the Northern Territory where there are no known COVID cases active and another two attended in Brisbane, which has relatively low case numbers. Two Green senators who attended rallies in Sydney and Melbourne, respectively, have declined to be tested. I'm following the advice of the Chief Medical Officer who said that it wasn't necessary to self-isolate. And I'm, I'm very confident that uh, my risk was minimised being at the rally and I'm minimising risk to myself and to others being here today. Mass protests breaching our public health laws could cause lives to be lost. This race baiting is not welcome here. This violence is not welcome here. And this disrespect for public health and the Australian community is most certainly not welcome here. This is the administrator for troubled airline Virgin Australia is believed to have written to Prime Minister Morrison seeking help as it sells the airline. There are two requests in the letter apparently that the Prime Minister extend the JobKeeper wage subsidy for six months for the airline's 9,000 workers and also guarantee Virgin ticket sales. Labor is already arguing the government has to show more flexibility with JobKeeper. We call on the government Stop putting politics before people when it comes to the review of JobKeeper. The Virgin request comes two days after the government announced it would be turning off JobKeeper assistance for the childcare sector. The World Health Organisation has been forced to backtrack after comments that suggested people infected with COVID but not showing symptoms were unlikely to spread the disease. We do know that some people who are asymptomatic or some people who don't have symptoms can transmit the virus on. The WHO says the original statement was meant to reflect the limited studies into asymptomatic cases. It seems even suffering a heart attack isn't enough to shock many Australians into looking after their cholesterol. It's just one of the findings of a landmark national study. Well, we already know that heart disease is Australia's biggest killer, but new research has found as a nation we're failing to manage it. A fresh report by the Baker Institute here in Melbourne has found more than half of high-risk people, that's Australians already who have been diagnosed with heart disease, are failing to control their cholesterol levels. 80% of people started on a cholesterol-lowering medication. Only about 50% of them reach the target level. Women like grandmother Sophie Henderson are most are at risk. I found out personally about my cholesterol levels is when I had my first heart attack. The 55-year-old suffered not one but two heart attacks in a fortnight back in 2018. Heart disease killed her father and her mother suffers from it too. Sophie knows she could be doing better in managing her cholesterol. I was prescribed a lot of medications, like all of a sudden I had, you know, eight tablets in my hand. By getting on top of our cholesterol levels, experts say we could save more than 3,500 lives and more than $66.6 .6 million in healthcare costs. More statues are being removed across Europe as the Black Lives Matter movement triggers fresh debate about sometimes dark imperialist pasts. In Belgium, a statue of King Leopold II was brought down. His brutal rule of the Congo resulted in millions of deaths. In Britain's Oxford, a campaign is growing to remove a statue of colonialist Cecil Rhodes, while in London, a statue of an 18th century slave trader was taken away. The city's mayor has ordered a review of London's monuments and street names.
In Hong Kong, thousands of people have defied a ban on gatherings to mark the one-year anniversary of a million-person rally against increased Chinese rule. The pro-democracy campaign was the start of the territory's biggest political crisis in decades. Protesters were charged by riot police, with several people arrested. An ancient Roman city buried deep beneath the earth has been revealed by scientists using ground-penetrating radar. A temple, theatre and public monument are among the images visible after the four-month study. Founded in 241 BC, the city stood for nearly a thousand years, with little more than this entranceway remaining today. Worthless insurance, the claims that have landed another big bank in court, that's ahead. Also, why there's been a spike in the amount of booze Aussies are consuming. And disturbing new information into the disappearance of little Maddie McCann. Away. It's awesome on steroids. You blew the roof off. New America's Got Talent next Wednesday on 7. We're open. Open for catch ups with friends. Open for new winter fashion. For drool worthy burgers with mates. For all those special things you can't find anywhere else. Shopping in real life in the great outdoors with fresh air and everything and taking advantage of $10 all-day parking and free short-stay street parking. Getting back to kind of normal feels kind of awesome. See you in the city. Oh. Ah. Hi. Hi, Mum, it's me. I'm just checking in. Oh, hi, darling. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, but it's a video call, so move the phone away from your no, ear. No, away on. Can I see you? Oh, yeah. There you are. Hi. So good to see your face, Mum. You too, dear. You don't need Australia's best network until you do. Your Ford dealer is open and ready to help your business get back to business with high vis value. So you can get the special edition Ranger FX4 for only $57,990 drive away or the special edition Ranger Sport for just $49,490 drive away. And don't forget to check if your business is eligible for the government's instant asset write-off this financial year. So hurry into your Ford dealer now for high biz value. Even remotely, our home loan specialists can zoom into your home to help you save on your next loan. For the mid-afternoon naps, for the midnight marathons. For bringing the family together. For a chance to escape from the world. For the good times. And the other times. For the years of support. Danks Furniture. The comfort of home. While we're all having nights in, make yours a big night in. Because this year you could win up to $8,000 worth of prizes from a huge range. Woolworths Big Night In. There's a new winner every day. The BHP Vital Resources Fund is providing support to regional WA communities where it's needed most. The Royal Flying Doctor Service now has more resources to meet increased patient demand. Lifeline now has additional crisis supporters for the emotional needs of the community. And Punta Corno Aboriginal Medical Service has additional staff to treat those in desert communities. BHP is supporting the communities that support us because we're in this together. 
A senior member of the Comanchero Outlaw Motorcycle Gang has just died in Royal Perth Hospital as a result of gunshot wounds. The 28-year-old man and a 27-year-old woman were found badly injured in a Waikiki home on Monday night. She remains in a critical condition. Gang crime detectives are investigating how and why the violence unfolded and interviewing a family member who witnessed the shooting. Police say they are currently treating it as a domestic dispute. The Commonwealth Bank has been hit with a class action lawsuit over the selling of junk credit card and personal loan insurance with claims worthless products were sold to hundreds of thousands of customers. Law firm Slater and Gordon has now launched action against all of the big four banks. It reached a settlement worth close to $50 million with NAB last year. The parents of Madeleine McCann are urging German authorities to reveal why they're so sure their daughter is dead. The McCann's lawyer says they've been shown no evidence that she is. A former neighbour of the German suspect, Christian Bruckner, says he told her back in 2014 that Madeleine was dead. In the months after their daughter disappeared, Kate and Jerry McCann travelled the world in their quest to find their little girl. 13 years on, they are once again seeking international help, this time to find out why German police seem so sure that Madeleine is dead. Today, the McCann's lawyer in Portugal urged the authorities to explain their evidence to them as a matter of humanity. I think that he should be, be more specific because it's a very, very serious affirmation. Of course, both father and mother, they know that Madeleine may have been murdered. Uh, and so that's a possibility. But I don't know why the German prosecutor is so strongly convinced that Madeleine is dead. Those prosecutors continue to investigate Christian Bruckner on suspicion of Madeleine's murder. Amongst the evidence they're considering, statements from neighbours such as Lenta Jolitz, who were with the 43-year-old when Madeleine came up in conversation. Und er sich sehr aufbrausend, auf einmal sehr nervös und sehr aggressiv. He suddenly got very aggressive, nervous and agitated, she says. He said very loudly, the child is dead. After all these years, you wouldn't find a corpse anyway. That was the only situation where I look back and ask myself, why did he say that back then? In Portugal, others are looking back and questioning the past, wondering about unsolved crimes, which took place when Christian Bruckner was in the country. German detectives have now spoken to the family of six-year-old René Hase, who disappeared from a beach near Praia de Luge in 1996. His clothes were left on the sand, and it's thought he drowned. However, no body was ever found. Firefighter Jose Marios led days of searching. There was no sign of where the boy had gone, he tells me. He just disappeared from the middle of the beach. The past days have raised uncomfortable memories here and brought other possible crimes to the fore. As a result, the need for answers goes far beyond these shores. The results are in on our changed drinking habits during the coronavirus shutdown. A survey has found close to 20% of Australians are drinking more than they usually do. The biggest jump was seen in women aged in their mid-30s to mid-40s. The main reason for increased drinking was being stuck at home, while stress, anxiety and boredom have also driven up alcohol intake. Denmark's Crown Princess Mary has attended her first public event since the country's coronavirus lockdown began. The Australian-born royal opened a design museum in the capital, Copenhagen. Very hey, inspiring. It's a wonderful museum, a fantastic uh, cultural his history journey of, um, from industry to dec decoration. During the visit, Princess Mary met glassblowers and viewed the world's largest collection of ceramics. More evidence has emerged that Rio Tinto knew the full cultural importance of the Dukan Gorge Aboriginal caves before they blew them up to expand an iron ore mine. Noel Brunning joins us from the GWN7 News Desk with the details. Rio Tinto funded a documentary back in 2015 in which local Aboriginal people make clear their concerns over the rock shelters. After Rio blew up the caves last month, it claimed the traditional owners had not raised their concerns with the company. 
Consumer Protection has issued a warning about a farm machinery scam after nine people across the state lost money thinking they were buying tractors. Among them, Donnybrook cattle farmers Verna and Gary Elks. And people with coastal properties in Geraldton are calling for help after recent storms caused widespread erosion along the Midwest coast. Now with a look at today's money markets, here's West Business Finance reporter Maylin Chu. Thanks, Sam. The local stock market has cooled off today after the rally we've seen over the past week. We took our lead from Wall Street there with US investors hitting the brakes ahead of a Federal Reserve meeting. The ASX 200 added just three and a half points with yesterday's leaders, the banks, energy and real estate, today leading the slip. Tech and consumer stocks were the best performing sectors. Healthcare heavyweight CSL, one of the biggest companies on the ASX, gained two and a half percent. Woodside and Origin led the energy losses down between two and three percent. Retailer Harvey Norman will dish out a special dividend of six cents per share to all holders after reporting a jump in local sales. And the gold miners have made a comeback today after gold prices jumped more than one percent overnight with risk appetite taking a back seat. Consumer confidence is back up to levels before the onset of the coronavirus pandemic according to the latest Westpac survey and West Australians appear to be leading the recovery spend on dining and takeaway. On the currency front, the Australian dollar is buying 70 US cents, and that's finance. Thanks, Maylene. Still to come, new Australian research, the impact of COVID-related stress on unborn babies. Plus, the Dalai Lama about to release his debut album with a little help from a Kiwi music producer. And how Prince Philip will be celebrating a rather impressive milestone. The West Australian, your essential companion for a footy season like no other. Before every round, pre-game, and after the siren, the game. Everything football from inside the West Coast and Fremantle Hub. For West Australians, by West Australians. Get pre-game tomorrow in the West Australian. The boys are back. I'm going to show you a clip which involves Collingwood fans. Uh, a warning, there is graphic content here. And children, you may want to leave the room. Collingwood fans, not a Mensa meeting. <laughs> <laughs> New front bar tonight on 7. You're relying on our network more. So we're accelerating the rollout of Telstra 5G giving more people and businesses access to fast download speeds in more places than ever. Thanks to Light and Easy, Australians of all ages can enjoy their choice of delicious, nutritious meals in the comfort and safety of their own home. Especially those at a greater health risk during these times. If you or someone close to you could benefit by having light and easy meals delivered safely with our contactless delivery service, visit lightandeasy.com.au or call us on 13 15 12. From home time to sleepy time, IKEA designs around life's precious moments. So make mess, mohawks and laugh until your belly hurts. Because with IKEA, there really is no place like home. The streets are calling. Make sure you're ready to answer. The BMW 118i from 49900 Drive Away. Joy is coming. You'd never clean your surfaces with this. So why use this? Sponges can carry millions of germs. Dead old wipes kill germs instead of spreading them. Now biodegradable and compostable. Stratco has all the offers you need during the Stratco stock take sale. Get 72 months interest free on patios and sheds and pay nothing for the first 12 months. Or get a $500 gift card on an Outback patio. T's and C's apply. So, you bring the dream, Stratco will bring the how-to. At Terry White Chem Mart, we're here to help this winter. That's why pharmacists like Bridget are trained to administer flu vaccinations right here in store. Book now. Walk-ins also available. Terry White Chem Mart. Now that's real chemistry. This is Grant. Make some assumptions about where he lives. By making assumptions, you don't see the individual. Grant is an urban planner. He retired recently and built his dream home. Because his house is less than five years old, he could pay less on his home and contents insurance. At UWE, we don't make assumptions, we listen. 
It's home and contents insurance for individuals like Grant. Yui. You insured. D.I. Lewis. Who were you working with? Learn the truth with Lewis tonight on 7-2. Being pregnant during a pandemic is undoubtedly a stressful time, but now it's proving to have a long-term effect on the unborn baby. An Australian first trial is assessing the impacts COVID-19 is having on unborn babies. Well, the last time the Marta conducted a similar trial was after the 2011 Queensland floods, which found the disaster caused significant effect on expecting mothers and their unborn children. Now the trial focusing on the pandemic's effects. I've definitely been way more anxious than what I was in my last pregnancy. 300 expecting families are being assessed on their social, emotional, financial and physical health during the crisis and also after they've given birth. It does help us understand a lot more about how we can best help families in particularly in, in times of stress. One of the things that is a major driver behind anxiety and stress is social isolation. The 2011 floods data found the stress affected the placenta and also made changes to the development of the newborn. Children who were in utero at the time of the 2011 flood have higher levels of anxiety. When they're in, in utero they can pick up on stress and anxiety and things like that and that was very apparent when I had my first child. The trial is supported by the lot who have donated $500,000 to the research. The trial will also follow up on the children looking at their neurological development and what they've experienced as they've gotten older. And COVID-19 has thrown many Aussies into financial turmoil and it's forced people to put their expenses under the microscope to make ends meet. New research shows one in three Australians admitting their bank balance wouldn't allow them to survive more than two weeks without work. Sunrise consumer correspondent Sean White has more. If your bank balance is looking a little bleak, you're not alone. Australia is in recession and we've been warned that things will get worse before they get better. Comparison website Mozo's latest findings reveal just how stressed we are about money. Mozo set out to gain an understanding of how long the average bank balance uh, will last people without a job. 14% said they couldn't get by right now. 20% said their cash would last just a couple of weeks. A further 14% wouldn't make it through the month. 23% could stretch their money up to four months. Job security fears have tripled since January and many Australians are struggling to save every penny they possibly can as they prepare for the possibility that they may not remain gainfully employed. Unemployment is expected to rise, which will put even more households under pressure. For homeowners who took a mortgage holiday when COVID-19 began, 89% are worried they won't be able to afford their repayments when they restart. Renters are concerned too. 67% fear they won't be able to afford their rent in the coming months. Large numbers of Australians are very worried about their ability to meet expenses once the, the current lot of financial relief schemes come to an end. But there are ways to get ahead. Start by creating a budget. This will allow you to see exactly where your money is going, where you might be able to cut back and what you can potentially be saving. If you can afford to save, uh, it's really important to use this time to try and save an emergency fund and look to save at least three months of day-to-day -day living expenses to safeguard yourself. Look at items such as streaming services and gym memberships and add up all your small daily purchases like coffee and snacks. Well, this will show you how quickly they add up and how much you can claw back. If you are still struggling, it's important to ask for help. There are free and confidential services available. Try the National Debt Helpline or Financial Counselling Australia. If you think you won't be able to pay your bills, get on the front foot and contact your provider before you're hit with late fees. Talk through your current situation and ask about their hardship programs. And finally, look at getting a balance transfer credit card. When it comes to consolidating debt, a good option is a 0% balance transfer credit card. These cards allow you to move debt and won't charge you interest for up to two years. But you need to watch out for the revert rate. 
A New Zealand music producer is hoping to send the Dalai Lama to the top of the charts with the spiritual leader to release his debut album next month. The album, titled Inner World, will feature 11 songs, prayers and readings set to music. Its release will coincide with the Dalai Lama's 85th birthday. Prince Philip is spending his 99th birthday low-key at Windsor Castle, but Buckingham Palace has released a rare photo to celebrate the milestone. Her Majesty and the Duke have been living there during the COVID outbreak. We're told the photo was taken last week, but keen observers have noticed the Queen's hands appear photoshopped. There's no official explanation as to why. A former docker to make his debut for the Demons. Details in sport after the break. back and it starts with a thursday night blockbuster you can't ask for more than that these two teams everyone here knows the history both teams absolutely desperate that's unbelievable collingwood and richmond headline the season return magnificent starting thursday live and free on seven mate why tyre power? It's more than just the power of lower prices. Because right now, get the power to buy now and pay later with zip pay at tyre power. Why would you buy your tyres anywhere else? Get the power. Tyre power. Get the power of Australia's biggest independent. With Belong, you get 10 gigs of mobile data for $25 a month. That's 10 gigs of family time. 10 gigs of scrolling through memory lane. 10 gigs of staycations or 10 gigs of catching up with the family. Plus, unlimited international calls and texts to selected countries for $5 extra. We all spend family time differently. Together, we're different. Belong. It's ABC's end of financial year sale with up to 50% off rollers, vertical blinds, furniture blinds, outdoor blinds, vision blinds and shutters. My legs are like tree trunks, and when tree trunks walk together, they chafe. But step one has got you covered. We put these lycra panels between the legs. It glides when you walk. You can buy them online at stepone.life. Step one, get some. Even remotely, our home loan specialists can zoom into your home to help you save on your next loan. Treat yourself to a smooth, delicious barista-made McCafe coffee and we could treat you to a free coffee every day for a year. Drive through and buy any McCafe drink and go in the running to be your local McCafe winner. Acorn stair lifts are the most cost-effective way to retain your independence. And Acorn's fast-track installation means minimal disruption and no need for custom rails. Call for a free on-site consultation or visit acornstairlifts.com.au. Why tyre power? It's more than just the power of lower prices. Because right now, get the power to buy now and pay later with zip pay at tyre power. Why would you buy your tyres anywhere else? Get the power. Tyre power. Get the power of Australia's biggest independent. There's only one brekkie show. Can't believe it. Where you can wake up a winner. How cool is that? You're watching Seven's Afternoon News. Basil joins us now. And Baz, another footy first in these unusual times. Right now, Sam, as we speak, the Eagles and their round two opponents are training together at Metricon Stadium on the Gold Coast. Ryan Daniels is there, and it's a bit of a unique situation, Rhino. One of the more unique training sessions you will see in AFL history, Baz. We're inside Metricon Stadium. You can see just over here the Gold Coast Suns are doing their usual training session for the week. Just over here, about 150 metres away, that's the West Coast Eagles going through their first session on the Gold Coast. Two teams that are playing against each other this weekend. Shannon Hearn spoke about just how weird it is earlier today. It's almost a bit like your junior days when you used to have the you know, round-robin carnivals, just have all different teams training and, and 
sharing facilities as such. So um, I can't see that being an issue. The West Coast Eagles, of course, play the Suns on Saturday night. The Fremantle Dockers play against the Brisbane Lions Saturday morning. Jesse Hogan, some chance to play. He'll play at some level, whether it be with the AFL side or in a reserves scratch match. Justin Longmuir spoke of Hogan earlier. He'll play footy this weekend. Um, we'll decide later today, um, early tomorrow, whether it's at AFL level. We want to see him play for Fremantle Football Club again, but we want to make sure he's resilient to last the whole season. Baz at 6 o'clock, more details on the AFL hub and whether or not we'll see crowds at the MCG this season. Great job, Rhino. Thank you. We'll see you again at 6. He set a cracking pace. Another fairy tale will come true on Saturday with D-listed docker Harley Bennell set to play his first AFL game in almost three years. His comeback will be for the Demons against Carlton. It's one of the feel-good footy stories of the year. Harley Bennell finally set to make his AFL return after spending over a 1,000 days in the footy wilderness. Really exciting. Um, massive relief when obviously Goody, Goody got us on a knee out there. The 27-year-old was given the good news after getting through the Demons' main training session this morning. The pain of years of career-threatening calf injuries giving way to an emotional moment with his new teammates. Ever since I walked into this club, I've loved every, every moment. Um, as I said before, I love football. And yeah, I'm just glad to be back. Bennell admits he will always have some doubts about his calf injuries, but has renewed confidence in his body after a successful few months of training. Yeah, it's still in the back of my mind, but you know, I've got the right people to talk to to, um, to not worry about that. The good news didn't stop there at the Demons. Young draftees Luke Jackson and Trent Rivers set to make their AFL debut against Carlton this Saturday. Premier League giants Manchester United have narrowly avoided exposing their biggest stars to coronavirus. Just minutes before United were due to play a practice game against Stoke, the championship side's manager, Michael O'Neill, was told he'd tested positive for COVID-19. The match was immediately abandoned and United say none of their players were put in danger. The Premier League has conducted more than 6,000 tests in recent weeks. With 13 positive results, the season resumes on Thursday week. Cricket's governing body has confirmed a number of interim rule changes to reduce the risk of coronavirus when internationals resume next month. Shining the ball with saliva will be illegal. Teams risk a five-run penalty if they ignore umpire warnings to stop doing it. And during tests, teams will be able to replace players who show symptoms of COVID-19 on a like-for-like -like basis. The first teams to play under the new rules will be the West Indies and England in their Test Series opener on July 8. OK, Rhino, uh, as I said, cracking pace on the Gold yeah. Coast. We'll get a training report and we'll hear from Shannon Hearn and Justin Longmuir tonight. Look forward to it. Thanks, Baz. And we have some severe weather ahead. I'll have those details right after the break. This is where WA starts the day. From this morning, COVID-19 restrictions are being relaxed. If it's breaking in Perth... Live now to the crime scene... You'll see it on Sunrise. Royal Perth Hospital. Sunrise's Perth News. Very good news to start our Wednesday. Sunrise, the best way to start your day in WA. They're coming. <gasps> oh, my God! Descending... From the heavens. Oh my god! Another four housemates. What is going on here? And the king and queen of the house. If there's a challenge, I'm gonna beat her. Are not impressed. Sabong is just scary. He will dominate every challenge from here. I'm scared of that. Tonight. Oh, hold on! A new challenge and a new eviction. You flirting with me again? No. <laughs> okay, sorry. New Big Brother, tonight, 7.30 on 7. The world could do with some good, but why throw eggs when you can scramble them? With a hot pan and a little love pack, a cook can tame the wild, feed the hungry, and nourish the weak. So choose your weapon, embrace the unwanted, and transform nothing into everything. The world needs more cooks, because where there are cooks, there is hope. Yum. Keep everyone entertained. 
add on Xbox All Access and play for three months on us. Visit telstra.com slash Xbox today. Miraness is launching on OpenShop. Founded by pharmacist Irene Patsalides almost 20 years ago, Miraness creates innovative beauty products that really work. With a number of global beauty awards, Miraness is a brand your skin can trust. Miraness is launching on OpenShop on June 11 and 12, Channel 75. Don't miss Region Power's 17-year anniversary special. Massive 6.6 kilowatt solar system. European manufactured inverter. Fully installed for just $42.90. Call Region Power today on 1800 Region. Visit regionpower.com. Harvey Norman has everything you need for your home, including the very best of Australian-made bedding. Make a statement with gorgeous Australian-made timber and fabric beds and customise the fabric, colour and timber stain to suit your style. Our huge range features the best names in Australian-made mattresses and ensembles. Sealy, Sleepmaker, Beautyrest, King Coil and Body Balance. Complete your sleep experience with beautiful Australian-made Manchester. All this, plus 60 months interest-free. Shop in our spacious stores, support local manufacturers and choose Australian-made. Now at Harvey Norman. Right, let's get some serious money happening here. 35, 45, $55,000. Wow, and you've been in devastating form today. Oh, yes. The biggest game at five o'clock. Here's a make or break. Comes down to the very last seconds. Oh. New The Chase, weekdays on seven. This weather report brought to you by Bridgestone Select for tyres and car servicing. Good afternoon, it's Savannah here with a check of your roads. And a crash on your Quinata Freeway, South Bend at Thomas Road has left its mark. So your freeway South Bend is slow city to Mill Point Road. There you can drive and it's on and off from Russell to Mundajong Road. Heading northbound, it's patchy from Manning Road all the way up to Reed Highway and dropping the pace again around Shenton Avenue. Our RAC Insurance take care of the things that are important to you and are there whenever you need them. Get a quote today at rac.com.au. More traffic tomorrow. Now, Fuel Watch, Perth's petrol prices. Brought to you by Fuel Watch and 7 News. Checking the weather now, we enjoyed another warm winter's day, top of 25 degrees. Looking at the national forecast, a foggy top of 15 in Canberra tomorrow and possible showers in Sydney and Brisbane. Back to Perth and a big change ahead. We have a severe weather warning in place from Durian Bay down to Warpole, including Perth. We can expect heavy rain and storms peaking early tomorrow morning, lasting until around midday tomorrow. Then for Friday, a similar story with a morning storm possible. Showers for the weekend too, 18 degrees on Saturday, 20 for Sunday. The rain could continue into Monday and should clear up by Tuesday, but return again on Wednesday. And I'll see you with Rick, Sue and Baz for 7 News at 6. Stay with us for The Chase Australia.
On seven. It all starts weeknights at seven on seven. These four strangers must work as a team to win thousands of dollars, but standing in their way is one of the sharpest minds in Australia, the chaser. The chase is on! <laughs> Welcome to the Chase Australia. Terrific to have your company. We're a team back here who I think have had quite confidence about them.